It's often convenient to break down a process into snapshots. For example, people waiting in line for coffee. While at any given time there are always people in line, we can imagine recording the number of people in line at any given minute. For example, we might get data like this. At t equals 1 minute, we take our picture, and we see there's 8 people in line. We take another picture at t equals 2, and now we see there's 5 people in line. And we can continue to take pictures of the people in line. So at t equals 3, we might see 7. At t equals 4, we might see 7 again. And at t equals 5, we might see 3. And while there is some number of people in line at t equals 1.5, we don't know how many, and we don't actually care. A discrete time model determines a quantity at time t equals k based on the amount at time t equals k minus 1. We often use discrete time models for biological populations with distinct life stages. In general, a mature or adult form of an animal can reproduce, an immature form cannot. There may be additional life stages, for example, egg becomes duckling becomes duck. In the duck population, eggs only come from adult ducks, so the number of eggs depends on the number of ducks. Meanwhile, ducklings only come from eggs, so the number of ducklings depends on the number of eggs. And finally, adult ducks come from ducklings that mature, as well as adult ducks that survive. For example, suppose that in a typical year, each adult duck lays 5 eggs, 90% of eggs hatch into ducklings, 80% of ducklings grow into adults, 70% of adult ducks survive into the next year. And if you begin with 100 duck eggs, let's find how many eggs, ducks, and ducklings you'll have after, well, how about six years? So a large part of mathematics, and life, is bookkeeping, and so we'll want a way of recording the information we've found. So we'll let ET, LT, and DT be the number of eggs, ducklings, and ducks in year T where whatever year we're in, we'll subscript that after the letter. We'll let our start be t equals 0. And since we start with 100 eggs, we have e0 equal to 100. We have no ducklings, so the number of ducklings in year 0 is going to be 0. And we have no adult ducks, so d0 is also equal to 0. Now, we'll record the number of eggs, ducklings, and ducks as an ordered triple, eggs, ducklings, ducks. And so we have e0, l0, d0, that's 100, 0, 0. So let's move forward in time. And an important idea to remember here is that it's easier to know where you've come from than where you're going. So remember, only adult ducks produce eggs. Since at t equals 0, there are no adult ducks, then at t equals 1, there will be no eggs. So e1 is equal to 0. And we'll record that as the first component of our ordered triple, e1, l1, d1. Next, only eggs turn into ducklings. Now, we're assuming 90% of the eggs hatch into ducklings. Since there are 100 eggs at t equals 0, then the number of ducklings is going to be 90% of 100. That's 90. And so the number of ducklings at time 1 is going to be 90. And we'll record that as the second component of our ordered triple. Now, only ducklings turn into ducks, and since we've just determined there are d1 equals 90 ducklings at t equals 1, this will tell us something about the number of ducks later, but not at t equals 1. 
And here's an important thing to keep in mind when working with any discrete time model. The present is completely determined by the past. We want to know what happens at t equals 1. We don't care what's going on at t equals 1. What we care about is what happened at t equals 0. So to find the number of ducks at t equals 1, we need to know the number of ducklings at t equals 0. Since there aren't any ducklings at t equals 0, there won't be any ducks at t equals 1, and so d1 is equal to 0. The next year, no adult ducks at t equals 1 mean no eggs at t equals 2. No eggs at t equals 1 mean no ducklings at t equals 2. 80% of the ducklings at t equals 1 become ducks at t equals 2, so there are 80% of 90, 72 ducks. Now, we know that 70% of the ducks at t equals 1 will survive until t equals 2, but since there are no ducks at t equals 1, these won't add any to our total. At t equals 2, we have 72 adult ducks, and each produces 5 eggs. Yes, we'll ignore the finer points of biology. So at t equals 3, we'll have 72 times 5, 360 eggs. At t equals 2, we have no eggs, and so we have no ducklings at t equals 3. The ducks at t equals 3 are going to come from two sources. First, 80% of the ducklings at t equals 2 become ducks at t equals 3. But we have no ducklings at t equals 2, so these don't contribute anything. Meanwhile, 70% of the ducks at t equals 2 survive. And that means they become no, no, I don't think so. Oh right, it's just a duck. So we have 70% of 72, or about 50 ducks at t equals 3. At t equals 4, the 50 ducks we had earlier will produce 50 times 5, 250 eggs. And the 360 eggs we had before will hatch into 324 ducklings at t equals 4. And again, the ducks at t equals 4 come from two sources. 70% of the 50 ducks at t equals 3, well, they'll still be ducks at t equals 4, so that's 35 ducks. And any ducklings we had at t equals 3 will become ducks, but again, there aren't any ducklings at this time. So we'll just have 35 ducks. At t equals 5, the eggs are produced by the 35 ducks at t equals 4. That's 175. The 250 eggs we have at t equals 4 will become 225 ducklings. Of the 35 ducks at t equals 4, 70% or 25 will still be around. Additionally, 80% of the ducklings at t equals 4 will become ducks at t equals 5. And so this adds another 259 more ducks. And so altogether, we'll have 284 ducks at t equals 5. And finally, at t equals 6, the 284 ducks will lay 1,420 eggs. The 175 eggs will become 158 ducklings. The 225 ducklings we have will become 180 ducks. And 70% of our existing ducks will still be around for a total of 379 ducks.